Welcome back. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I enjoy doing these videos, so the more people that watch, it's more fun for me. Uh, got the Cherokee back in the shop right now, and this video is kind of a follow-up video, kind of like I did on the cooling system for the FC, except on this follow-up video, I am following up on power brakes. Uh, if you recall, when I did this uh, rear axle on this Cherokee, I converted it to disc brakes. And the rear brakes use a three-quarter ton Chevy front caliper. The front brakes on this Cherokee are the full-blown one-ton big front brakes. So when you do a conversion like that, you do have to convert your master cylinder, uh, as I've stated before, to a disc disc master cylinder. Like this one is a disc brake master cylinder. I think that 82, 83-ish Mercury Marquis Lincoln Continental Mark Series. Those vehicles came with power disc brakes and this master cylinder works really, really well with those. I have used this master cylinder on several conversions I've done. Ran into a little problem though. The master cylinder went out and they are no longer available. Uh, not even remand. I cannot find a replacement master cylinder. Well, now this video I've got one brake vacuum booster, two different hydro boost units, and three different master cylinders that are going to be taking place. So I thought it'd be kind of advantageous to take a few minutes and talk about bleeding a master cylinder. Uh, first of all, if you have a place you can bench bleed it, you're way better off getting the initial air out of the master cylinder on the workbench. Now there's a couple ways of doing this. A lot of these will come with these little thread in uh, tubes that you can throw in to the top and that works just fine. Uh, when I learned how to do this, they didn't have those little kits and those tubes. And I discovered it was really easy to bleed a master cylinder on the bench with just a couple simple techniques. Now, this one has caps in one side and I've got these just plastic plugs in the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first put fluid in the master cylinder, clamp it in the vise, get yourself a screwdriver so that you can push the actuator piston in and I'm just going to push this in and fluid's going to squirt out. Now I'm just going to put my fingers over the port and release it. What that's doing is I am pushing fluid out when I release my fingers and again push this. Now I've got a rag under here so that it's catching this fluid because this is messy. Once I've got the piston depressed, I put my fingers over the plugs and release it. Do this several times and you're getting a pretty good steady stream of fluid come out. And I have a pretty good steady stream of fluid coming out since this has been on a car before. Now I am putting the plugs back in because I don't want this stuff leaking all over uh, new paint and things like that on a vehicle. Which, by the way, brake fluid is really, really corrosive to paint. So, if you're getting this stuff on your paint, wash it off. It's water soluble. You can use brake cleaner if you want, but wash it off or it'll bubble your paint up. And clean up all my mess here. Okay, once your bench bled, you're ready to go set this in the car. Before you get all excited and think you have to change your lines out no matter what, remember 
the amount of fluid this master cylinder can put out is metered right here. If I put a bigger line on, the most it's gonna meter through is the size of this port. Now, what I want to avoid is putting a smaller line compared to any of these ports. So if you're doing one of these conversions, pay attention to your port size. You don't have to go with some big monster line. Most of the time you can leave your original lines uh, the way they are. Uh, I've used the smaller lines like on the FC on a disc disc, works great, stops perfect. I've used large quarter inch lines on my army truck because they fit, it works great. And it all depends on your port size. So don't get too excited about the line size by itself. As long as they aren't smaller than these ports, you should be okay. What I did when I was unable to find this master cylinder, I went looking to another popular master cylinder that is used for disc disc brake conversions. This particular master cylinder has ports on both sides, so it doesn't matter which side the lines are on. This master cylinder also has this slug, which goes in the back, which means you can use it for power brakes or manual brakes. It's the, I think it's seven eighths, but it's the smaller bore disc disc master cylinder. It is based on the Corvette. Now, I installed this, it was a direct bolt in I had to put one adapter in one of the uh, ports in order to uh, make it all work. How did I think this master cylinder performed? Eh, marginal. It did not work as well as the Mercury Marquis master cylinder. I always found when I hit the brakes, uh, I kind of always had to tickle the brake pedal a little bit. And when I say tickle the brake pedal, I mean, just lightly pump it a couple times, get the fluid pushing into the system a little further. And it wasn't because there was air in the system. It just didn't have enough oomph coming out of here. That led me to my next conversion. I thought maybe it's just not getting enough pressure from the backside into the uh, master cylinder via pressure, meaning I don't have enough throw, uh, the power booster can't really push that rod far enough. So I have sitting in the back of the shop a Hydro Boost unit. Now, what is a Hydro Boost, you may ask? A Hydro Boost is a hydraulic power assist unit that runs off of the power steering pump, just like your power steering box does. I have one of these, it'll work, and the reason it will work is an old one, is it is a disc drum Hydro Boost, and this portion of the master cylinder will work with uh, a disc drum master cylinder because this is designed to be a retrofit master cylinder, okay? Here's where I'm gonna stop the background part of this video and show you how I did that part of the conversion first. Put a little bit of silicone on the tip of each of these and then carefully push it in. And you can mark the firewall where to drill and you don't have to guess. You can see the silicone marks. Now I'll take a punch, punch them and drill them. You can see the two holes I'm not using. I'm actually, I actually cut this edge up three quarters of an inch so it would clear the steering column. That was one of the reasons it didn't fit like I wanted it to, but uh, now we're on the downhill slide. So we'll get her finished and uh, I'm gonna tack weld those studs in there too. Throw a little spot weld on those studs after I moved them so I don't have to hold the back of them. And I can use all the same bolts. Okay, you can see the plate. Looks like it fits nice, but to me, retrofitting is really harder than starting from scratch. I lined this up and marked it and then drilled the holes. Unfortunately, this may sound really weird, but I'm gonna wax this surface really heavy before I put this booster in because that'll help prevent rust getting sandwiched between these two. So, 
that was a waste of time drilling the firewall so that it would mate with these holes. I was hoping I had enough throw in the pedal because I'm using this short rod, but it turns out I need about a three inch distance. I'm off on the throw. So I'll just get a piece of tube that's about five-ish inches, cut a hole, drill it, cut a hole, drill it, and uh, create a, an adapter spacer. Just mirror a set of holes through this piece of tube. That gives me my spacing I need. Well, I needed a bushing for the brake lever because that hole there is the size of the pin on the brake pedal. And this outer size is the size on the uh, actuator or the push rod. Uh, this is a caliper slide pin guide for a GM caliper. Uh, they're available everywhere. I just, I did have to shorten it up a little bit. Right. Here we are installed. Now, make sure on this rod, if you have to pull it out, recrimp it into the hider boost unit. Those need to be fixed somehow. If not, that rod can come out, fall down, and you have really uh, bad brake problem then. But here on my rod I've got a washer then inside the rod I've got that bushing I made out of that uh, piece of brake caliper guide tube and then I've got another washer and a cotter pin the other thing I do is when I'm finished I take a piece of foam tubing insulation like you would put around a water pipe for a water heater or something like that and I cut a piece that fits inside of that square tube adapter I made and it covers this hole that way I don't get a bunch of airflow in. You can also see I've got nylock nuts and washers securing my mounting plates and that's it for underneath. From this angle you can see up where my uh, brake light switch hits the pedal and then you can also see the other side bolts that go through the uh, steering column uh, brace. Just bolting the master cylinder to the hydro boost unit. Now, I did not even remove the lines on this master cylinder. No sense in making an unneeded mess. I just moved it out of the way until I got it all lined up. I'll have to move this wiring harness over there once I get this bolted up. But hopefully that's you can see this one's got an O-ring style. These just thread right in. And the nice part about these kits, these are O-ring style, which are generally late model. My pump is an O-ring style, it's late model. But the steering box is an inverted flare. And it comes with all those fittings. And now I just make the hoses so they fit and they bolt on with the dash six fitting. I use a piece of electrical tape to mark these hoses. Uh, and then I put them in the vise and I'm gonna cut this with a cutoff wheel because, well, they're tough. There's steel in there and uh, you're not gonna get a good clean cut with a pair of wire cutters. This one's gonna be easy to index. I, in, I like indexing just so I don't have to loosen the fitting and turn it. My lettering is gonna line 
up exactly with the bend. So this one will be really easy to finish. Thread your outer fitting on, make sure it's seated all the way in. Reverse thread, standard thread. Um, you can also put a little bit of uh, lubricant on this, like silicone. Uh, makes it a little easier to thread, less chance of stripping stuff out. This is going to make the inside of that hose expand out into the outer shell. I don't put any uh, lubricant on the outer side of these, just on the uh, inner. Run it all the way into where the hose is seated. I've had pretty good luck with these hoses, but you really got to make sure you do them right. Part of that is silicone on there. Helps them thread in. Best part about these kind of fittings is they're reusable and can really save you in a pinch out in the middle of nowhere on a trail. Fully seated. Take your time with your routing so that everything is clean, doesn't rub, doesn't bind, and doesn't create a problem that you just can't see yet. It's almost as long to reroute looms and hoses so that they're at least somewhat neat and clean as it does to do this conversion. You can see I've got my high pressure from the box. You can see I've got my low pressure return there and then my other low pressure return for the hydro boost goes here. Now, you can tee into these, but I happen to have a pump that was already set up for hydro boost, so good there. You can see the two lines way down here on the steering box. Those go to the ram assist down on the front axle. And then we've got one line comes up here, which is one of the pressure lines return line, and then my main pressure line, which this goes down to the pump. Yeah. Corvette style master cylinder with the Hydra Boost. I had a much better pedal most of the time. It still had a cork that really, really bothered me. If I was coasting downhill in my driveway, for instance, and I didn't have a lot of uh, engine RPM, bumping the fluid pressure up from the power steering, uh, I would hit the brakes and the power booster would feel really good for a little bit and then it'd get really hard and it would not stop. A uh, little spooky, but once the unit was warmed up and it had some RPM and it had built pressure up and things like that, it worked okay. It still, I don't think, worked as well as the original disc disc master cylinder I converted it to, uh, which was, you know, uh, based on the uh, Mercury Marquis master cylinder. But every now and then, a lucky accident happened. What was that lucky accident? The Why was the Army truck a lucky accident? because I scavenged a big bore disc disc hydro boost system out of a 2002 Chevy truck, the same truck that the engine came out of. I got that hydro boost with that too for free. I put that hydro boost in this truck and lo and behold, this is the absolute best stopping vehicle I own. I can move that brake pedal that far and all four wheels would be locked up with 40s on it. This truck stops. So I'm not real happy with the brakes in the Cherokee Chief. I'm really happy with these brakes. 
you can probably see where this is going. Conversion number four now. I am going to install a big board disc disc brake system out of a uh, Chevy truck. This is the Hydro Boost I found. Found. Uh, I've got a friend that does a bunch of Chevy part outs. Uh, he yanks LSs out of stuff. And this truck he had had a six liter he sold to someone. Had the rest of the truck sitting there. So I swooped in and nabbed the Hydro Boost unit out of it. Uh, I did order a new master cylinder because I wanted to start fresh. And here we go. My fourth. Uh, power brake system on the Cherokee. We're going to make this work now, I think. Uh, removing the lines from the Hydro Boost won't make too much of a mess because they're higher than the power steering pump. So I'll lose a little bit, but not a ton. I've got a towel underneath the master cylinder to catch the uh, fluid that will come out from the brake lines. And I'm going to undo those after I remove the Hydro Boost lines. Just so I leak less, I try to do this as neat and orderly as I can. I do have a bucket under here to catch what fluid I do lose. I do have the bolts removed from inside. Just makes it a little easier to manipulate everything out here a little easier. The line kit will transfer over, but I do need the fittings. And these are O-ring fitting. And you can kind of see, when you pull one out, they kind of leave a nasty little piece of rubber there. Put new O-rings in, you'll be happier, it won't leak. Comparing the rod length, I think I will probably be okay. However, I need to swap out the plates, so we'll do that now. Just a side note, these big nuts are kind of a pain in the butt to remove. I kind of knock them loose and then they'll come right off. But Make sure you torque those back real good and don't forget the snap ring. That snap ring is a safety feature that will keep that from coming off. Now I already can see some of you out there asking me what the heck is this goofball doing? I already had a hydro boost. All you had to do is put that big four master cylinder on it, right? Well, wrong. The hole 
that sleeves the master cylinder into the hyper boost is a substantial amount larger than this hole. So I had to change out the actual hydro boost unit. I also would have to have had to change out the adapter plate I built. So either way, everything was gonna have to come out. And you can see I'm putting it in. The adapter and the hydro boost will go in first. And then I'll mount the master cylinder. But do I replace the master cylinder and put new lines in it or just the new master cylinder? I'm going to wait to put these lines on until the master's in just so they're out of my way. All right, next. Looks like I've got plenty of room and they'll line right up, but I'm hesitant on using the, the rear lines fine. It's a way bigger volume. Um, if I make new lines, I don't have to use an adapter. I'm gonna try to make this quick and not very complicated. Bench blade the master cylinder, put the plugs in it so it doesn't drip on paint or anything while I'm installing the master cylinder. Got the master cylinder installed, remove those plugs out of the ports and hand tighten my lines into those ports. I did not tighten those with a wrench at this point. Now I'm just gonna take a pry bar and push the brake pedal down. That way it holds the brake pedal down between my seat I'm going to go out and now I'll tighten the lines down on the master cylinder. Now that the lines are tightened on the master cylinder, I remove the pry bar and let the pedal come back up and that is sucking new fluid into the master cylinder. Now I'm going to go back out here, loosen the line, and then I'll put the pry bar back in. Lines are loose. Put the pry bar back in. It's blowing air and fluid out now. By the way, I've got a cloth underneath those brake lines so I'm not making a mess. Now I'll go back out and tighten those brake lines. Okay, brake lines tight, remove the pry bar. Now there's a lot of fluid coming out. I don't think I've got much air left. Now I'm gonna pump the brake pedal a few times and put the pry bar back in. Now at this point in time, those lines are still tight. Now I'm gonna go back out and crack those lines loose and visually see if I'm getting fluid or any air mixed with that fluid. All right, no air appeared to be coming out when I crack those lines open. I'm getting a nice solid stream of fluid. Lines are tight, take the, the stick back out. Uh, what I have done now is I have a secondary bled the master cylinder and I have bled the upper lines out. Now, when I've removed this master cylinder, I did not open the lines downstream. So that fluid was held up in the top of the lines. If you're worried about it, definitely bleed the rest of your brakes when you're done with this. I've done this enough times and, and know if I've risked getting any uh, air into the lower lines at this point. I don't need to bleed the rest of the brakes. I'm getting solid fluid out here and I have broken the lines loose nowhere below that. So my brake system, I am confident, is bled at this point. That's kind of an easy trick of the trade so that you don't have to bleed the rest of the system and uh, it verifies that your master cylinder is bled. By the way, if you don't have a workbench and you can't bleed a uh, master cylinder on the bench, do what I just did. You'll just probably have to do it eight or 10 times before you start getting that master cylinder bled. The other thing is 
Tickle the brake pedal while you're bleeding your master cylinder. If you have not bench bled it, that'll help push air in the upper valve out of the master cylinder itself. Uh, okay, master cylinder bleeding 101, done. Now it actually came out really clean. I did replace the rear brake line. I had to flare and put a different fitting on the master cylinder side, but the uh, lower connection is the same. The front portion of the master cylinder was a direct bolt-in. I'm probably going to replace these lines with uh, nice clean braided steel uh, brake lines just to make it look nicer, but I wanted to test the unit first, and uh, so far, so good. Well, here's the test. Well, you just touch the brakes and they stop now. Of course, you can hear my whiny power steering pump that's been like that since I did this engine conversion. But I really like the feel of the pedal now. It stops on a dime. Uh, I think I finally found some brakes that uh, will really work good on these full-size units. So uh, not everything goes as planned on the first shot, but a little persistence, and you're uh, always always attain something. I am thrilled with the results on this big bore hydro boost master cylinder system. Uh, my recommendations, if you're doing some weird conversion and you can get uh, one of these big bore hydro boost units to fit in there, do it. Uh, save yourself all the headache. That's kind of why I like doing this YouTube channel. I've got four different power brake systems in this Jeep. The first one worked pretty well, and that was a system that I had done before. A couple didn't work as well as I had planned, and my happy accident with the uh, Big Bore Hydro Boost unit is the fix. Uh, if you have questions on what parts I used, throw it in the comment section. I'm happy to answer that. Uh, just as a quick reference on the actual Hydro Boost, it is out of a 2002 uh, Chevy 2500 uh, Hydro Boost four-wheel disc brake system. And the truck had ABS on it. This obviously doesn't. You don't need any of that ABS doing this old stuff. You can still retrofit it all in. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video.
this is called pinch point it requires rear steering so this is a side trail that most of us aren't doing just a couple of guys with rear steer
keep it straight. A little driver. Now you can start turning passenger. It's gonna wanna slide probably. It's okay, keep it passenger. It'll come right up. Passenger, passenger. Now we go a little driver. <laughs> 